Hi, my name is Sparky Mark. I'm here today to do a mast fixing demo video. Um, so start off with down this way. We've got all the bits that you need for fixing a mast track with. Um, so what we've got is some plexus glue, which is quite hard to get hold of, which looks like this. Um, you also need to have the right kind of gun to go with it. Um, LDC or Ovington would be able to get hold of these for you. Um, the other thing you need is one of these, which is a nozzle for mixing it with. Um, so that's the gluey bits. The other bits you probably will need as well. Obviously, section of track, um, ideally the right kind. There's a few different varieties out there. There's some carbon tracks on older boats, like 300s and 600s. 800s have this plastic tracks, and 700s have metal tracks, as do 29ers. Um, some other bits you might want, some masking tape is really handy. Uh, you don't have to have this expensive seven day stuff, but something similar is pretty adequate. A uh, bit of really cool sandpaper is really handy. Uh, some tongue depressors, you can get them in a box of a hundred for like a pound from any chemist. They're dead handy for any kind of fixes. A few of those are pretty handy as well. Some rag for uh, doing any cleaning with is also really really handy as is alcohol which helps to clean any excess glue off um, the health and safety stuff you probably want some dust masks because you're probably going to end up sanding some carbon uh, always make sure you get a mask with a filter on and ideally one with a CE mark um, as they'll protect you from all the dust uh, latex gloves are also quite handy again get them from a chemist box of a hundred for like a pound Stick them on your hands, use them when you're doing all the gluey bits, and then just chuck them away. Lastly, some electrical tape, always handy to have, and you'll see why later. And then, for actually chipping off the mast, hacksaw's really handy, and also a hammer and a chisel, ideally one that's sharp. Okay, so first section of replacing mast track is you need to chip it off. As we've got this mast over here, I've already done a lot of the hard work because um, it would be boring and it would take forever if I hadn't have done, but I've got this little section here. All you want to do is find the two places where you want to, uh, where you want to replace the track, saw it down with a hacksaw, and then chip it off from there on in. So this little section here, I've got my hammer, I've got my chisel, so I'm just going to chip it off like this. So it hangs off in the air. So you might want to watch yourself next any time you're doing that. And you can see there's a little section just there that's just been left. You should just be able to chisel that off quite nicely. You have to be quite careful doing this as um, it is quite possible to actually uh, bury the chisel into the mast and cause some structural damage. So really be careful when you're doing this. But at the same time, only worry when you're getting further down towards the mast. Uh, when you're still at the top, just hammer away at it as quick as possible, otherwise you'll be there all day. And the last little thing, just try and make sure you can get it really, really smooth and get rid of any little bits and pieces that are there. Like so. Okay, so once you've chipped the mast track off, the next thing you have to do is key it up. Keying up means basically get some really rough sandpaper and rough the surface up so that when you do glue it on, it will stick really well. So in order to do this, health and safety, really I should be wearing a mask, but because I'm only sanding a little section, I'm not going to bother. So just sand away so that the mask is just slightly scratched up. You don't really want to go too far with this as you're going to weaken the mast. Okay, so next bit, after you've cleaned the uh, mast up and you've got all the old track off, you have to cut some new. Before you can do that, best thing to do is measure up how much you need. So, grab the tape measure on it. It does help if you've got someone else helping you out with this. You want to measure from the top to the bottom, get the most accurate measurement you can. Remember the feeder at the bottom does have a bit of play. Um, I would go for the most accurate cut you can do, plus a millimetre. So if we take this back off again, with a bit of luck, <laughs> I've got this little bit of section of track, which I made earlier. 
So let's just see if we can just fit that on and just double check it all lines up. So it does just about line up perfectly. Now, as with anything, to do with any kind of fixes, you have to make sure you prepare everything. So this is what we're gonna do, first of all. First thing we need to do is shove a couple of tongue depressors into the track and the feeder. The idea being that it lines it up so that it won't be off, off center. So if we line up a couple of those in there, like so, the next thing we're going to do is run two lines of masking tape down either side of the mast. The idea being that this then gives us a nice straightish line on which to line up the track for when we're doing the gluing stage. So this is quite important to get right. So in order to do this, we'll make sure that we take a run of masking tape all the way along. Fortunately, we've got a couple of section, a couple of places where we can line up the mast. We've got the track, sorry. We've got the feeder down at the bottom. We've got this spreader fitting up here. And we've also got the join up at the top. So this will help us ensure that we've got a nice straight section. The reason for using the masking tape is because it means that any excess glue we have is easily taken care of. We can just rip it away, throw it in the bin, and it'll make cleaning up a lot easier on the next time around. Okay, so once you've prepared the mast with the masking tape, the next thing to do, take the track, sand it all up, and key it all up, and get it nice and scratched. So again, when we do glue it, it will be nice and strong, and the glue will actually go into the tracks and into the mast and hold. Um, after that, what you then need to do is clean everything because uh, the one thing glue doesn't like is uh, any kind of dust near it. So what I'm going to do here is get a bit of rag or elephant loo roll as we call it and some alcohol or acetone, whichever you've got access to. And just stick it on the rag and just clean away and just make sure all the dust is gone from the track that you're going to glue on and then also just make sure you get rid of all the dust on the mast. Okay, the next little bit is having got everything prepared we now need to glue the track onto the mast. So this is the bit of a technical bit. So health and safety bit first, always put on some gloves because they'll stop your hands from rotting, which is uh, always nice. Uh, the next bit is actually grabbing hold of the plexus glue that we're going to use. Um, I'd always advise using plexus glue over epoxy or araldite, as it's the stuff that the manufacturers tend to use. Uh, if in doubt, I'd find out who makes your masks and I'd ask them what to use. Um, these uh, plexus guns are a bit strange. The way it works, you have this little um, little sort of key that you have to use on the actual nozzle to switch it on and switch it off. Um, and your plexus kit and gun should come with all this. Um, what I'd normally do first is put the key on, turn it, so that's in the off position now, uh, on position now, and then I'd start pumping a bit. And what I'd do is just to make sure that it's pumping through, I'd pump a little bit into the bin. The idea being that you can make sure it's running properly. These plexus kits do sometimes, they don't necessarily always run as well as they could do. So I always tend to run a bit through the gun first of all, and then a bit through the tube, just to make sure it's mixing properly. Next thing is to put on one of these tubes these are disposable, so when you finish the job, you have to chuck it away, unfortunately. Um, and what these tubes do is they mix the two parts of the plexus together so that it starts to cure. So what I always tend to do is gonna load through, making sure that I'm getting a nice, consistent mix, which I think I am at the moment. 
So then the next thing to do, once I gun it off, is to start laying up the old glue onto the track. Well, onto the mast I think is probably going to be easier. So just try and make sure you get enough glue onto the track, onto the mast, so that when you put the track onto the mast and squidgy it down, you get excess coming out of the other side. So, having glued the entire mass, next thing to do, make sure that the plexus gun is turned off, unscrew your tube, and chuck it in the bin. Okay, after we've done that, we've got the exciting part, which is where you've got to put the track onto the mast. So, I always tend to use the feeder, because it's quite an easy point to push it onto and just gently lay up onto the mast like so. Okay, next part is to attach the tongue depressors so that you know that it's definitely going li to be lined up which makes life a lot easier for the sail to go up and down. So I put that set in and when I can find them Put the other set in. Okay, so now we know that it's definitely going to be lined up. So, next thing to do is just squidge it all down, make sure it's pressed firmly down. And in line. This is where the masking tape comes in quite handy because, as you can see, I did have a few little bows there but now it looks nicely lined up. So next bit, rip the tape off, like so. And just get rid of it. And this should hopefully take quite a lot of the excess glue with it. And then finally, just get yourself some electrical tape which is always hard to use when you've got some gloves on and wrap a couple of runs just to hold it in place as it cures. Uh, curing time for this plexus glue varies a bit depending on temperature. The hotter it is the quicker it will cure so out here where we are in Menorca at the moment it will probably cure in about I don't know, probably about 24 hours or so. Back home in the UK in winter, it might take a bit longer. So next bit, dump the gloves in the bin, and it's just the final little bit of cleanup. So just get yourself a bit of rag, a bit of alcohol, and just clean off any excess glue that you see. Because you want the job to be nice and neat and look professional, rather than looking a bit rubbish. So. Once you've cleaned off all the excess glue, um, you just leave it to cure, and that's pretty much it. Once it's cured, just rip off all the tapes, take the tongue depressors out of the track, run some silicon spray all the way along it, sling the mast in the air, rig it, and it'll be good to go. So that's pretty much it. I think this is a pretty good method for retracking a carbon mast. I'd like to thank Honor for giving me her assistance. <laughs> briefly and also the very excellent filming skills of Sarah Bagley. Uh, last little thing I'd like to say is I'd like to thank John Clark for his input into this method. I couldn't have put it together without his help.